Okay, this is a video for solving equations with variables on both sides with fractions and decimals. Now, I want you to flip this page over. I'm going to do a sample problem, so then you can practice these six problems on your own. Then you're going to set up an equation and solve. If you're to this point, you have already done this. Do not, on your word problems, set up an equation and solve. Don't do a table, don't do guess and check. I want you to get practice on setting up an equation so it's more efficient and you can get a more concise answer and less errors. So, go ahead and flip your paper over. You're going to write a sample problem with me and you're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to work it out. So we're gonna start with the fraction ones first. So here is an example. We're gonna take 7 tenths n plus 3 halves equals three-fifths n plus two. Now, when you have fractions, I know a lot of people say change it to decimal and work. If that's your last resort, yes, that is an option. The problem is all your fractions cannot be changed to terminating decimals. So if this is like a three the de denominator, a nine, a six, maybe even a seven, a seven's not repeating denominator, but it goes on for a long time. It go, it's going to repeat after six places. It is not the most efficient way to solve fractions. So we are going to get comfortable with fractions. Now here's a tip. I could subtract three-fifths from three-fifths n from seven-tenths n but, and get a common denomina denominator to solve. But if I can get rid of the fractions, it's, it's called clearing the fractions. I'm going to. So what you want to do, a tip, one way you can solve it, is I want to get rid of these denominators. Now, one way to do that is to find the least common denominator. And this is why you learned that skill probably back in fifth, definitely in sixth grade. So the least common denominator means what's the lowest number all three of these numbers go into. What's the lowest number that all three of those numbers go into? And that the lowest, the least common denominator is 10. So what I'm going to do is, you, I like you to put parentheses around here. You're going to multiply each term by 10. So you're really distributing the 10 to each term. Now you're taking 10 times 7 tenths. Think of this as like 10 over 1. Well, 10 over 1 times 7 tenths, you can cross reduce. 10 goes into 10 once, 10 goes into 10 once, you get 7n. Now, 10 over 1 times 3 halves. 2 and 10 cross reduce. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 10 5 times, so 5 times 3 is 15. Bring down your equal sign. 10 over 1 times 3 fifths. If that confuses you, get rid of that 5. 10 over 1 times 3 fifths, because you always have to start with 10. Don't start with your reduced one from each of these. 10 over 1 times 3 over 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 5 goes into 10 twice. 2 times 3 is 6n. And the last but not least, and a lot of people do this, they forget to multiply this term. 10 times 2 is 20. Now, you can go ahead and now, this is a, what you've seen before, you can go ahead and combine like terms. Whoops, that's no n there. Hold on, I messed up. n plus 15 equals 20. Subtract 15 variables to one side, constants to the other. n equals 5. Now, when you test it, it is best to test it back into here. Okay? It's best to test it back into your original problem. So, testing. 7 tenths times 5 plus 3 halves equals 3 fifths times 5 plus 2. Order of operations. Multiply before you add. This is like 5 over 1. 7 tenths times 5 over 1. Cross reduce. 5 goes in 5 once. 5 goes into 10 twice. 7 times 1 is 7. 2 times 1 is 2. Leave it as an improper fraction because look, you're going to have to add 3 halves. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 5 once. It's like 5 over 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2. 7 plus 3, since the common denominator is already the same. 7 plus 3 is 10 over 2. 
10 divided by 2 is 5. 3 plus 5, 2 on this side is 5. And 5 equals 5. You can do this work. It's simple, but it's not fast. And it might not be easy, but take it step by step. Know your multiplication of fractions. Know how to add fractions. Know how to distribute fractions. It's all these skills. Did you see me have to grab a calculator at all? No. Know your facts, know, and you have to think step by step with it. OK, now let's look at a decimal. Let's find a decimal one, and we're going to do an example for a decimal. I don't know if this is on the front. Let me just, oh, it, I was going to use one that was exactly on the front. So let me find another one real quick. Okay, here is one for a decimal. 8.35x equals 425x plus 3690. Now, you could go ahead and don't do anything with the decimals and just move it and subtract them if you want. Um, or another way you can do it is clear the decimal. If you don't want to worry about having to line up the decimals correctly, um, you can clear it to where what you can do is if you want to get that decimal, you want this decimal number to be a whole number. And the way to do that is you want your decimal at the end. The thing is, mathematically, you are multiplying by, in this case, it's two places, so you're, ma you're mathematically multiplying it by 100. So here's a tip. It might be simpler on this one just to go ahead and subtract 4 and 25 hundredths, but I'm going to show you this in case you need to use it. Multiply every term by 100. What that does, it gets the decimal to point to the end. Okay, and all of these are in the hundredths. So it makes it 835x equals 425x plus 3690. Sometimes they get larger numbers, so it may not be as efficient on this one. So subtract 425. The only thing I like with it is that I don't have to worry about decimals and we don't have to, you know, worry about lining them up. We're subtracting here. Okay, so, so 4, 4, 10x equals 3690. And then you're going to divide by 410. Now stop and look at this for a second. Don't instantly grab your calculator right now. Yes, this would be a problem when I say, okay, use a calculator. But look at something. Look at 4 into 36. 4 goes into 36 nine times. So then look at 10 into 90. Isn't that nine times? So I bet if you took 410 times 9, look how that is going to be 3690. So x is going to equal 9. So sometimes you can stop and process, look at the problem, and see if you can figure it out just by, I don't know, think about it. All right, put 9 back in here. Now this is where I'm okay with you using a calculator to figure out this step here. Because, oh, oh that needs to be 9. I can hear you in my head. All right, so that's going to be 9. And I'm okay if you want to go ahead and grab a calculator because it just makes this process a little faster. It's not one that I'm expecting that you know right at the top of your head. But you have to write that down. 4.25 times 9. Make sure you type it in the calculator correctly. 36.90. This is already in your calculator here, so just add 36.9. Watch your decimals. And that t does come out to 75.15. Okay? 75 and 15 hundredths. So there's examples of how to solve fractions and clearing, clearing the fractions and clearing the decimals. All right, your task is to show your work here. Now, there's probably enough room here to do it. I don't know if you're going to have enough room to check. So you might need to do your checking on another piece of paper. Set up your word problems. Thank you for listening. I know that was kind of long. Bye.